When George heard that, uh, Gallery One was interested in doing an exhibit with his art. He was so excited. Um, Sean McCarthy, the director of Gallery One, she had emailed me. I talked with her a little bit, kind of some emails back and forth, and then I called him and let him know about the opportunity, and he was really, really excited. Emailing him even being here at the event, and because he's overseas in London, it's been a fabulous event. He's so excited about it, so it was a big deal. This is actually the first opportunity that George has had to um, exhibit his art at a university. Art is something he's done for so many years and something that he's so passionate about, but never at a school. It's a great opportunity and you know, we've already had the revealing yesterday and he was so excited to hear that it went so well. Growing up, art was always a big part of our family. But I remember probably as young as 11, maybe 12, we had a deck off the back of our house in Michigan, and I remember he would be in there with canvases, you know, and painting, and he would always have a pad with him, and pencils, and pens, and, and markers, and that kind of thing, always jotting stuff down. If it wasn't lyrics, it was some type of drawing or something. Art and building in some way was always really important. He just really told me and encouraged me, whatever art comes out of you, that's what you have to contribute to art and that's so important. That's your voice for art, so you just do that. So his collection is pretty large because he's been doing it for so many years. He's always painting, yes. Painting is important to him. Paints in the hotel rooms, you know, always drawing, like I said, always coming up with concepts and designs, so he is, yes, he's, he's gonna always be painting. As my father's publicist, well, it's, you know, it's, it's different when you're working for your parent and when your parent has a job where people know his name, they know his persona. Obviously, musically, I mean, nobody will ever be able to dispute what he's done for music. I mean, current music, the hip hop industry. He brought funk to a completely different level and a completely different awareness to people. He made it, he made it fun for one. I mean, their shows were crazy and ridiculous and out there and, you know, the mothership thing being, that was like a whole different connection. And so that really helped establish his legacy, but I think a lot of his legacy, it's not just his music. Obviously, we've got the art aspect that we're working on right now, you know, and people are just becoming more aware of it. You know, he's written a book that came out last year, so now we have that legacy. And we've got family members, I've got nieces and nephews who are performing with him on stage now, you know, some of us kids did at different times in our life, and we're helping build the family business, you know. We have homegrown entertainment, which is, you know, building our family legacy musically. And another thing, the mothership is being um, displayed in the African American Museum of Cultural History at the Smithsonian. It um, unveils October of 2016. That's a big deal. That's a huge, huge thing that they're going to actually have that branch of the Smithsonian Library available to the public now. And to have that part submitted in there, I think that in itself speaks for the legacy that he's going to leave. His artwork is for sale, and I think it's such a great opportunity for the art to be being presented now. Art tends to be one of those things that we don't appreciate until somebody's necessarily gone. That's why I love this opportunity for it to be in a college setting where even younger generations can see, hey, this is a great opportunity to purchase a piece of what will be history, but I can appreciate it now as the artist is still here and that sort of thing. So.